All right, so let's pick it up where I left off in the last video. We were looking at um, the equation of motion for a charged particle moving in a uniform magnetic field, and we'd come up with this equation for the x component of the velocity. Um, I'm going to continue through with the mathematics here, and in class, and a little bit in the video here, I'll try to give you physical intuition for why um, the orbit behaves the way it does. Now, this constant omega <clears throat> is QB over M. This is the gyro frequency. Uh, we'll see this is the, as, as we'll show, the orbit will be a circular orbit in the uh, plane perpendicular to B, and the frequency at which it executes that circular motion is going to be uh, omega. Okay, but let's get there mathematically, and then in class I'll argue physically as to why it's a circle. Um, all right, so uh, this this equation we've seen before. This is the same equation we had in simple harmonic motion. So we know that the general solution to that is going to be the same. It's going to be sines and cosines. And one way to write um, the general solution to this equation is just the a cosine of capital omega. That sets the frequency of the motion. Uh, T plus uh, some phase phi. Okay. I could also write it as a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t. Uh, that's an e a legitimate solution. I can do either one. Okay, but this one I find a more compact way to write it. Um, now, in the previous video, we had a relationship between vx and vy that we wrote down, and it comes from the uh, f equals ma in the x direction. So this is ma equals f, and we found that f um, in the x direction is just q vy b. So this tells me that vy is just 1 over omega vx dot. Okay, and so I can write that down. I have vy then is going to be um, negative a times sine omega t plus phi. Okay, that's not a very good phi. There we go. That's a little bit better. All right, so there's vx and vy. Um, all right, so I um, can now, so what we'll need to do eventually is use some initial conditions to find a and phi. So there'll be initial conditions on the velocity in the both x and y direction, and we'll use those to get a and phi, but we'll also have initial uh, positions in the x and y plane. Okay. Now, before I do that, let's just write down the um, expressions now for the position. We have the velocities in general, but the positions will just be the integrals of the velocity. So I can write that the um, position x minus the initial position, x naught, which is where it was at time t equal to zero, can always be written for any motion, right, as the integral from zero to t of uh, vx over time. And I'll use a dummy variable, dt prime. That doesn't mean a derivative, that just means dummy variable um, just because I have um, t in my integrand here. All right, and so I can write this down. Uh, this is just going to be a over omega sine of omega t plus phase. Okay, and I also have to keep um, another term because I evaluate this from the t to zero. So this is this is one evaluating the integrand uh, after I integrate at t, and I subtract from that uh, t equal to zero, which is sine phi. Okay, so that's the general solution um, for the x position. Okay, and for the y position. Um, let me write that down. I'm going to also do the integral. Maybe I'll spare the details. So y minus y naught, I'll do the same kind of integral. Uh, and what I'm going to get is uh, a over omega times cosine of omega t plus phase. And also I'll have a minus cosine of phi. OK? All right, good. Um, so now I have my coordinates, I have my uh, y as a function of time, x as a function of time, v as a function of time. Um, now a and phi are determined by initial conditions. Now I've already explicitly written down the initial position, which is x naught and y naught. Um, there's also a z naught here, but remember the z motion along the field is very simple, so we're going to ignore that for now. Um, 
So if I'm, I have to be given information about the velocity. So let's do this. Let's set up a particular um, situation. And let's have um, the velocity at the beginning be all in the um, uh, x direction. And so this is at t equal to 0. And vy is equal to 0. So if that's true, um, if I go back and look at my expression for uh, vx and vy, I see that for at t equal to 0, if I want the y velocity to be equal to 0, then I can do that by setting phi to 0. Okay? So if I set, so this is going to be um, sine of uh, omega t, and if t is 0, I'll get sine of 0 plus phi. So sine of phi is 0. Uh, si sorry, sine of phi is uh, times a is vy at times 0, which is 0. So either I can set a equal to 0, which will be a trivial solution because that, that makes the velocity 0 at all time, uh, or I can set phi to be equal to 0, and that will solve the condition. So if I have phi equal to 0, then at t equal to 0, I have vx equal to a. Okay, And so with those two um, conditions, um, I have that uh, this determines phi to be equal to 0. And this one says that a is equal to v0. Okay? And so then I have vx is equal to v0 cosine of omega t, and vy is v0 also sine omega t. Okay, And so that satisfies our initial conditions. And now we can go in and write down what x and y are. So x minus x0 is then going to be v0 over omega uh, times sine of omega t and y minus y naught, and that's here I don't have anything because phi is 0, and so that second term goes to 0. This will be v naught over omega also, but it'll be cosine omega t um, minus 1. I'm making a mess of this, sorry. Okay. All right, because I have that term cosine of phi, which becomes 1. Okay. All right. So there, um, that's my uh, solution for the particular initial condition that I just gave you. And so now we also have to specify what x0 and y0 are. Um, but uh, what we see from the solution is we get uh, oscillatory behavior uh, in both the velocities and in the positions. All right, so I'm going to pick some initial uh, positions for this motion to, um, to get rid of x0 and y0. Um, I don't have to to talk about the motion, but let's do it. Um, if I pick the following, and you'll see why I do this in a second, I'm going to let x0 equal to 0 and let y0 equal to v0 over omega. If I do that, then what I get is the following. I get x is equal to v0 over omega times cosine of omega t, okay, and y is v0 over omega um, times, oops, sorry, that's a sine up here, not cosine, sine, and this is cosine, okay? All right, so uh, let's look at what that motion um, looks like. So if I have my y-axis my x-axis here. Um, the initial condition says I start at x equal to 0, but y at some finite value, okay, which I've um, picked to be v0 over omega. If I do that, um, what I get is a circular orbit. So if I evolve this forward, what will happen is x will start at 0, but then uh, go positive towards um, as sine increases. Um, but y will decrease because cosine starts at 1 and then decreases. Okay, and then after a while, I'll find that uh, I'll have y equal to 0, um, but sine of the, at the same time will be 1, and I'll have x equal to v0 over omega. And then if I, as I continue, I'll go over here, and then over here, and then I'll come back to the beginning and execute a circular motion continuously that looks like this. Okay. Now the radius of this circle is given by the coefficient here. 
Okay, so the radius is called the Lormor radius, or the gyro radius, and that is defined as the uh, velocity of the particle in the perpendicular direction over the uh, cyclotron frequency. Okay. All right, so this gives us a circular orbit um, with radius that's equal to v over, or v over omega, where v is the perpendicular velocity of the of the uh, particle. So that's going to be um, formally v naught is going to be the square root of v x squared plus v y squared. Okay, and you'll find that this is always true for the solution we gave above. Um, so, all right. Now, let's say a few things about this. Um, uh, first of all, we see that this velocity, this velocity doesn't change during this orbit. Okay, so that what that tells us is that the energy of the particle is the same at all times. Okay, in this case, um, and that's because magnetic forces do no work. Okay, so you can accelerate a charged particle with an electric field, but a magnetic field does not um, lead to net um, energy being inputted uh, to the particle. And so the work done by um, a force is going to be F dot V, and, or sorry, this is the power um, associated with, this is going to be the power, the rate of energy per unit time, uh, the energy um, given to the particle per unit time is F dot V, and in our case F is QV cross B, and the way we talked about cross products is that cross products are always perpendicular both to both of the vectors that you're crossing. So that means that V cross B is always perpendicular to B, and this is always equal to zero. Okay, so magnetic forces do no work, um, and you end up with what happens is the magnetic force just changes the direction of the particle, and it makes it go into this circular orbit uh, called a, a cyclotron orbit or a gyro orbit. Okay, now I'll spend more time in class talking about intuition, physical intuition. I'll go through another way to think about how this orbit is circular, and we'll talk about why um, the gyro radius scales the way it does and why the gyro frequency scales the way it does. But I just wanted to go through the mathematics with you here so I don't have to do it in class. Okay, I'll stop there.